It's a new year and a new chance for you to make a fresh start with your compliance. Or we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. Day 9, Fostering Culture with Psychological Safety. How can you improve culture through speaking up? In a MIT Sloan Management Review article entitled Fostering Ethical Conduct Through Psychological Safety, the authors ask such questions as, how do organizations encourage people to speak up about ethical breaches, whether in inadvertent or deliberate? And how do employees choose to remain silent Why others report misconduct? Additionally, they analyze the perceptions of those who reported misconduct against those silent bystanders to help understand why both the drivers and derailers of speaking up have revealed insights into how leaders and compliance officers should encourage employees to make such reports. The authors believe it is more essential than ever that when misconduct happens or problems, difficult problems arise, there is a strong ethical climate for resurfacing information so that leaders can respond quickly and appropriately. An environment in which employees feel comfortable reporting such issues is also vital to preventing future misconduct. The starting point for any analysis for psychological safety is with one of the authors, Amy Edmondson, and her seminal work, The Fearless Organization. The authors began by modifying her 1999 psychological safety scale to emphasize a special focus on employees speaking up. Interestingly, they added the idea of thinking before speaking up in hopes of measuring hesitation. They did so to capture comfort levels in speaking up, based on the intuition that in a psychologically safe climate, people tend to say something right away when, when they don't feel psychologically safe, they are more likely to keep incidents to themselves. By looking at how psychological, how psychologically safe an organization is, the authors posited that they could measure variance in psychological safety across team and regions by surveying employees. They believe that this approach would allow them to focus on teams who need the most help and to identify teams whose psychologically safe cultures may offer examples from which the other teams can learn. To do so, the authors developed a survey which asked the following. On the scale of 0 to 10, their level of agreement on the following statements. On my team, if you make a mistake, it is often held against you. Members of my team are able to bring up problems and tough issues. People on my team sometimes re- reject others for having different views. It is safe to take a risk on my team. It is difficult to ask other members of my team for help. I think about how raising concern will reflect on me before speaking up. Interestingly, the authors acknowledge the relationship to whistleblowing in the context of both th- psychological safety and ethical business practices an important distinction between external whistleblowing and those who speak up about perceived misconduct at work. Moreover, recognizing the vital role external whistleblowers play in the detection of any prong of best practices, if a whistleblower goes to the SEC or other external actors, it is almost always because they felt their concerns were not expressed, heard, or internally addressed. The authors believe that a healthy, organizational culture is one in which speaking up and listening go hand in hand and therefore reinforce ethical standards. If concerns are expressed, changes are made in a timely way. This is important at mo- because it moves the detect prong to the de- prevent prong, which is by far more effective and uh, cost savings for every company. Further ideas or innovations rather than simply reporting of untowards actions can make a company more efficient and more profitable. <clears throat> All of this means that if there is a psychological safety, a company can receive far more benefits than simply the monetary fine or, indeed, penalty avoidance. So what are today's three key takeaways? Number one, in it we explored how speak-up cultures 
improve your overall corporate culture and will give you cost savings in the benefit of reduced penalties and monetary fines. Number two, what is the role of psychological safety in improving culture? Uh, clearly, there's a direct tie. And number three, what's the role of externals in your overall corporate compliance program? This is Tom Fox again. I'd like to tell you about an exciting new tool that I have developed with Sam Silverstein, head of the Accountability Institute. It's called the Culture Audit. We're going to premiere this tool at a webinar on Tuesday, November 28th at noon. I've linked to the webinar in the show notes. In this webinar, you will learn how you can assess the current state of your corporate culture, how you can use the cultural assessment audit as a gap analysis, and how you can use the cultural assessment audit as a roadmap for remediation, and how this process will provide a documented auditable trail if a regulator ever comes knocking. I hope you'll join Sam Silverstein and myself on Tuesday, November 28th at noon central time, where we premiere the new software tool, the Culture Audit. If you've enjoyed this podcast, I hope you'll subscribe, rate, and review wherever great podcasts are listened to. Thank you for listening to this episode of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program. 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a part of the Compliance Podcast Network.